One of the most important things you can do before you start an IV or draw blood is to properly anchor the vein before you stick it. Anchoring a vein will help prevent it from moving or rolling as you go to penetrate the skin with the needle. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to anchor veins. So first of all, why do nurses and phlebotomists and other healthcare professionals need to anchor veins before every stick? Well, the biggest reason is because veins are actually quite mobile. And whenever you go to take the needle and actually penetrate that skin, it can cause that vein to roll to the side or move to the side, which causes you to miss the vein. And I know that most patients aren't going to have visible veins like this. However, in my videos, I like to use veins that are like this because it helps you to visually understand what's going on under the skin. Now, you may have heard of the expression rolling veins or hear another nurse say, well, the vein rolled on me. And what that just means is that the vein moved. It doesn't necessarily mean that the vein rolled around on its axis. It's really just an expression that we use to describe whenever this happens. Now, what can cause a vein to move or roll? Well, there are several reasons this can happen. One reason is that the patient actually shifts or moves their body suddenly, especially if they're confused or afraid of needles. So it's always important to instruct the patient to remain still. In addition, some patients populations can experience mobile veins more than others, particularly older adults. As a patient ages, vein skin and surrounding tissue can lose elasticity. And then lastly, some veins move due to their location. For example, veins on the hand tend to be more superficial and have less fat and other structures around to help keep them in place. Whereas veins in the cubital fossa region tend to be a bit more stable due to the surrounding muscle tissue. However, remember, you always want to anchor every vein before you stick it. So before anchoring veins, you always want to perform hand hygiene. Next, you want to palpate for a vein to penetrate. Ideally, go for a straight vein that is easily visible. Properly prepare the sites and follow your facility's protocols for anchoring veins. Now, there are two important steps that you want to follow whenever you're anchoring any vein. The first step is to create some tension on that vein. You do this by having the patient either straighten or bend the extremity to naturally stretch that vein out. To illustrate this, just picture a piece of string. When the string is just sitting there, it can move in almost any direction. However, when I apply tension to the string, it loses much of its mobility. So let's say that you're drawing blood or starting an IV from a vein in the cubital fossa area, which is found on the front of the elbow. You could extend and support the patient's elbow to apply tension to the veins. Now, if you're using the hand, you might want the patient to make a fist and gently bend the area to add tension. However, However, if you're drawing blood, like for lab work, be sure the patient doesn't pump their fist or squeeze too hard because this could alter the potassium lab results. The second important step in anchoring a vein is to position the thumb of your non-dominant hand around one to two inches below the insertion site and then pull the skin down and hold the vein in place. This will add even more stability to prevent excessive movement of that vein. And a key point to this step here is while you're holding the skin taut and applying light pressure with your thumb over the vein, you're also using the rest of your fingers and hand to hold the extremity steady as you penetrate with the needle. And once you've performed all the necessary steps, you're ready to stick. Another technique that some people use to help anchor that vein is called the C-hold or the C technique. With this technique, you use the index finger and thumb to stretch the skin taut and to hold the vein in place as you stick. Now, this technique also works to anchor veins. However, the newest guidelines recommend not using this method because there's a risk of a needle injury to the healthcare worker. In addition, when you use the index finger and the thumb in this position, it makes it a bit harder to hold the extremity steady with the rest of your hand. In the thumb anchoring technique I discussed at the beginning, it makes it much easier to to grasp the limb and hold it steady. So as a quick comparison, you can see how both methods can anchor the vein in place. However, the thumb anchoring technique is generally considered safer since the thumb is under and not above the needle. Okay, so that wraps up this video on how to anchor veins. And if you'd like to watch more videos on how to start IVs and other IV tips, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.